morning, everyone. Welcome to Hunter News. Live in Tallahassee, Florida, I'm your host, Yvonne Hunter. You have probably heard that there are many unknown microorganisms that we have yet to identify. Well, a FEMU instructor and his students have conducted a study to try to identify those unknown microorganisms using sequencing and bioinformatics learned in their microbiology class. One student discovered that one of the microorganisms she sequenced was an escapade pathogen, which are pathogens resistant to most antibiotics. Microbiology student Yvonne Hunter said her results surprised her. We have her here today to hear more about what she sequenced. Thank you for having me. After conducting several tests, it was concluded that the gram-negative cockabacillus and unknown UB2016540 is Acinetobacter boloni. For many of you not familiar with Acinetobacter boloni, it is a bacterium commonly found in soil and water, but has also been isolated from hospital environment. I am glad I was able to sequence and discover this because now I want others to know that you're not even safe at the place where you go to get treated for these diseases and infections. This bacterium is responsible for 19.1% of ventilator associated pneumonia cases, and due to the constant use of different antibiotics in the hospital, this bacterium is highly favored in healthcare settings. If detected, it can be treated with colistin or rifampicin antibiotics. Thank you, Yvonne. Acinetobacter barmani has not only been a nuisance to our patients and doctors in the U.S., it has also been a nuisance to our troops overseas. Take a look at this video. For us, because for the last several years, there's been a constant influx of patients. It's more of a prolonged outbreak, I think, than most hospitals have. A handful of people have died after being infected. It's not clear how many. Others have suffered but lived. Not just the combat wounded either, but older patients and infants who've been exposed. Frequently the weakest of the weak. A lot of patients are colonized with, uh, with Acinetobacter. But it's the patients that have additional injuries. They're very systemically ill. They have an associated arterial injury, associated abdominal injury. Those are the patients that run into trouble. Usually, but not always, a seemingly healthy nurse spent months near death after being exposed. At one point, doctors at Walter Reed found a relatively safe antibiotic to treat Acinetobacter. But then, doctors in Iraq, working for different commanders, began using it on all casualties. The bacteria quickly developed resistance. And policies on infection control and antibiotic use haven't changed much, even after four years of battling the bacteria. Over that time, has that created some hard and fast rules that everybody is bound to follow? Um, no, no, but there are guidelines and uh, uh, sort of loose oversight of the practicing patterns of the physicians. But there is no one person that says, Dr. Jones in Baghdad, you must, you must do this. Leading some to ask, isn't it time? That's what really held me back. That's why I was laid up in the hospital for so long. Is the medical community, the military, getting a handle on this in any way? A lot of competent and conscientious infectious disease specialists are working on this, but as I say, they're often doing it within a single hospital, within a single uh, country. Not coordinated. Not uh, to the extent that one would think, given uh, if you were to focus on the patient in this process, because the patient's moving through these countries. The, the, from all-time highs of uh, infection or, or what they call colonization, just evidence of the bacteria on the skin, it's down now to about 20%, but still up to 20% of uh, wounded soldiers and Marines coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan test positive for Acinetobacter. So four years in, right. uh, some doctors I talked with say more progress should have been made and a more systemic approach to dealing with the problem should have been uh, And still the worst outbreak of this kind, as we said at the outset, in history. Right. All right, Chaz Henry, thanks for sharing your excellent reporting on this. We'll keep tabs on this. I know you will as well. Appreciate thanks. It. Thanks, thanks again. Observing the blast tree displayed, we see down below there is a highlighted yellow region. That region is our unknown sequence. This tree concludes that our unknown is indeed an Acinetobacter, however it felt to include what strain of Acinetobacter it is. Just below that, we see a sequence name, Acinetobacter barmani, ATCC17978. This sequence was determined to be identical to the unknown sequence, and it can be concluded that although it is not our unknown, they can be siblings. As mentioned previously, Acinetobacter barmani is commonly found in water and soil. Its natural habitat has yet to be discovered. Mentioned previously is that Acinetobacter is a member of the Ascapade pathogens. Also included are Staphylococcus aureus, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Enterobacter 
and Enterococcus spasium. These bacteria are responsible for more than two-thirds of all healthcare-associated infections. They have become members of Escapade due to their ability to become drug-resistant. They are also known as a doctor's worst nightmare. People who are at risk includes those who are critically ill, so someone housed in an intensive care unit or a healthcare facility housing ill patients, such as a nursing home, as well as those with a weak immune system, so young children. Referring back to the video regarding the military units, it was also determined that even a healthy person is at risk if they come in contact with the bacteria. Acinetobacter baumani is transmitted by both person-to-person -person contact or contact with a contaminated surface. So that door handle that you grabbed on your way in, for example, if it was contaminated with the bacteria, and say you didn't wash your hands after this class, since this bacterium can go a while without detection, later down the line you may find yourself in the hospital with an infection it may have caused or even spread it to someone else. As well as ventilator associated pneumonia, Acinetobacter baumani also causes meningitis, bacteremia, soft tissue infections, surgical site infections, peritonitis, endocarditis, and catheter related and urinary tract infections. Like the MRSA we learned about, this bacterium is also resistant to most antibiotics, making it very difficult to treat. However, researchers have found that it is sensitive to meropenum polymycin B amycosin, minocycline, and tigacycline. To protect yourself from contracting this bacterium, I have three things to suggest. Number one, wash your hands. Besides, it's disgusting if you don't. Number two, keep all wounds covered until they have healed. That is one of the main places where Acinetobacter baumani is found colonizing on patients. Number three, listen to your doctor. I know sometimes they may say things that seem boring, but trust me, they know what's best for you. Now it is time for the class activity. For a bag of potato chips, name one antibiotic I named previously that treats Acinetobacter baumani. There were seven antibiotics in total. You only have to provide me with one. Let the games begin.